Alrighty, so today there really wasn't much to talk about in baseball. There was a couple small signings. There was a guy from Japan coming over in Yoshitomo Tsutsugo. I think that's his name. I'm pretty sure that's how you say his name. Um, to join the Rays. And there's a couple rumors going around. You can see the Marlins are starting to become a little bit more active in the market. So we'll talk about everything. If you guys are still enjoying these videos, make sure you hit the like button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoy the content. And as always in the comment section, let me know your thoughts on what's going on in baseball if you missed the last video it's going to be up here in the top corner go and give it a watch and in the description are all social media links twitter instagram snapchat go and give them a follow so let's talk about kind of the rumor first and the rumor is the marlins are starting to look for corner outfielders one of them was that they met with puig recently and when you look at puig you know what you're getting you're getting around a 260 average close to an 800 ops really solid arm pretty decent fielder but I feel like this would be the most expensive option for the Marlins. I feel like they're still at a point where they're still rebuilding. Do you really want to go out and give a good amount of money and like kind of a big contract to a player where you still really aren't out of that rebuild? Do you feel like this would be a piece that you really want to build around? You know, pay him the money, give him a long term deal and then maybe say, OK, we sorted our right field spot. Let's see what else we can do with this lineup, with this pitching. Or would you rather settle for, you know, a little bit less of an option, maybe like an Avisal Garcia, maybe a Cole Calhoun, Corey Dickerson, even go out and trade for Eddie Rosario, who they've been linked with the last couple days. I feel like any of those other options besides Puig would make a little bit more sense with the places they are in a rebuild. But if they were to go out and get Puig, I mean, it's not a bad option. You know, I think he's what, 29, 30, maybe 28. So you're looking at a player who, like I said, he's going to give you around 20 plus home runs. He's going to hit around 260, close to an 800 OPS, decent fielder, good arm. You know, you know what you're getting with Puig. He is also Cuban. So, you know, the Cuban connection with Miami, maybe he'll, you know, go to Miami and feel like that's where he belongs. But I don't know. You know, you have VR in center. You have Dean and Harold Ramirez currently in the corner outfield spots. You got Asan Diaz at second, Miggy at short. You got Brian Anderson at third, Jesus Aguilar at first, and then Alfaro behind the dish. If you figure out those corner outfield spots, I feel like you got a really solid lineup. And I feel like they really need to add some power to the, to the lineup. Also a lefty bat. That's why I feel like Puig really isn't a solution. I think someone like a Cole, uh, Corey Dickerson, Cole Calhoun, or a trade for Eddie Rosario makes a little bit more sense. Eddie Rosario as a trade, I feel like would cost a little bit but i still think it's a pretty attainable trade with the prospects and the players that the marlins have when you look at eddie rosario you're looking at 32 home runs last year he had 100 over 100 rbis his ops was just under 800 and he had about just about 280 so you know what you're getting with eddie rosario he definitely has some pop off the bat he's an okay fielder i mean he's not a gold glover out there you know he's not he's not gonna make the flashiest of plays but he'll get the job done and left and i feel like Adding that pop to the lineup would be a great addition to this team. I think he's 30 years old, and I feel like you can get him for three, four seasons, and I feel like that would be a great addition to left field. Another two options that, I mean, wouldn't be too expensive, Cole Calhoun, Corey Dickerson, both lefties as well. Cole, Cole Calhoun offers a little bit more pop off the bat. Last year had 32 home runs, and he's actually a really solid field fielder in right field, so I feel like that would be a really good option. For the Marlins, you, good lefty bat, got some power, also a good fielder. Corey Dickerson would play left, lefty bat, hits in the like 15 range for home runs. He's actually hit around 300 the last couple seasons. He's been pretty consistent. Um, so, you know, he wouldn't be a bad idea. And obviously the last one would be Avisael Garcia. He is a righty though. So, I mean, would kind of avoid that lefty that you do need. But Avisael Garcia is another decent option. You know, he's in, I think... 28 29 age range he hit 282 last year his ops was around 800 he had 20 home runs 72 rbis so again all these options are really good for the marlins i just feel like puig makes the least amount of sense because i feel like he's gonna be the most expensive and for a team that still needs like a completely new pitching staff i don't know if you want to shell out the money on puig right now when you could pay some pitchers instead or so instead so i feel like go for like a garcia Avisal garcia a cole calhoun maybe even trade for eddie rosario and then take that money and shell it out for some pitchers i think that makes a little bit more sense so let's talk about a couple other moves um brandon morrow went to the cubs the issue with him is he just can't stay healthy last time he pitched was 2018 at the around the all-star break um he's had back issues he's had elbow issues so it's a minor league deal so i feel like you know what if he can stay healthy 
it's not a bad option for the Cubs. When healthy, he's a lights out pitcher. The issue is he just really can't stay healthy. So for me, Brandon Morrow to the Cubs, it's not a terrible deal. It's a it's a low contract. It's kind of like it's a it's basically no risk. Um, low risk, high reward. If he does well, you got a great, great reliever. If he does poorly, it's whatever. You're not expecting too much from him at this point. He hasn't been healthy in a year and a half. So who knows what's going to happen? The other kind of minor contract was Brett Anderson to the Brewers. One year, five million. Let's take a quick look at his stats. So when you look at it, the last two seasons in Oakland, last year he threw 176 innings, 389 era and a whip at 1.3 last year about the same 1.3 whip and he's he's okay again the brewers are definitely in need of some pitching they've also brought in lindblum um josh lindblum so i feel like they're starting to make some improvements but again i don't see it as that much of an improvement over what they already had i still don't really see them having an ace i still don't really see them having like a really strong pitching staff so this move you know, you can see, you saw his stats on screen. Is it a, a terrible move? No, you're you're looking at a guy you can send out there every fifth day, get the job done. And, you know, he may have a little bit of upside. His la his year last year was not terrible. Good good ERA, good whip, threw a de like close to 200 innings. Like it, it shows that like he actually had a decent year, 13 and nine on the year as well. Like it's not bad, but I just feel like it it's not, if you're a Brewers fan, is this, is this really what you want? Would you rather just kind of get a low contract player and just kind of plug it in the rotation? Or would you try to spend that money and try to get like a solid ace? Someone that you know you're going to get a good outing every single time. I do feel like it is a little bit of an improvement over what they already have. But again, I'm still just like, come on, Brewers. You can do a little bit better. You should be doing a little bit better. And I feel like this is just another one of those safe pickups. You know, it's not a bad contract at all. One year, five million. And I feel like it's more of like, a, if it goes well, we look amazing. If it doesn't go well, it's like, okay, whatever. We didn't really give him that big of a contract to begin with. So it, it looks like it could be a good pickup, you know, good ERA, good whip. He's throwing a decent amount of innings. You know, he's going to go out there every fifth day and get the job done. But I feel like you should be doing a little bit better. And if I was a Brewers fan, I'd be expecting a little bit better. So let's talk about kind of the second biggest thing that happened in baseball today. And that's Yoannis Cespedes restructuring his contract. So I guess there was kind of some behind the scenes stuff that the Mets really didn't believe that Cespedes got hurt like he said he did. So I guess last year they withheld his salary and they said that this year they were going to withhold it again if he didn't restructure his contract. So I guess they're saving over 10 million this year to uh, restructure his deal. So I felt like, you know what? I feel like they kind of held him at rants. Like they kind of held him and gave him an ultimatum like, hey, if you want to get paid, you got to restructure it. You got to take a smaller pay. So I feel like for the Mets, this is a gr again, great business. I feel like they've been on a great, like a great tear re recently. You know, you got walk on the cheap, you got Porcello on a decent deal. Cespedes is taking a smaller pay. And the thing with Cespedes is like, he's just been having those injury issues, but when healthy, he's shown that he can, he can be a great offensive player. You know, fielding wise, he's been, he's definitely has the ability. He's got a cannon for an arm. You know, he's going to be what, 33 this year. So again, he is aging. Is he going to be the same player dealing with foot and ankle injuries? Those are going to be tough to recover from. So I think this was more of just a, a business deal from the Mets to make sure that they had some money to play with to see if they can get a new player in, maybe get that true center fielder, maybe get another bullpen arm maybe get someone else to help offensively whatever the deal is i feel like it was more of a business end deal from the mets and i like this yoannis espinas again just hasn't been able to stay healthy he's played in just over 100 games in the last two years last year he played under 40 games anyways so i feel like again this is really good and from the mets this is really really smart again like because like i said they're trying to save money they're trying to be able to have that money to spend elsewhere and you look at other teams who have aging players that have gross contracts. You look at uh, Miguel Cabrera, who's been injured a lot. Why doesn't he restructure his deal? Albert Pujols, why doesn't he restructure his deal? Especially Pujols, a team that has Mike Trout on it, why not restructure your deal to get a lower pay so that you can start winning? You know, that's kind of my thing. I get it, you're gonna make a lot of money, but why not just take a little bit of a pay cut so they can spend that money on some pitching? Like the Angels need pitching. If I was the Angels staff, I'd be like, hey, Pull holes. Let's talk. Let's see if we can get you on a lower pay. See if we can start winning you some games. So 
for the Mets, I feel like this was a good move for Cespedes. I understand why he took the pay cut because he wants to be paid. So, again, if he can stay healthy and come back and help the Mets, I think that's a good thing as well. Then he can show that, you know, maybe the Mets will give him another chance. But for right now, I think it was just really good business from the Mets. So, let's round it all off. Let's talk about this, this import that the Rays have signing Yoshitomo Tsutsugo. So it was a two-year, $12 million deal, and he's a lefty. He plays corner outfield, first and third, DH. So he kind of plays the corners of the field, and I guess can be a DH as well. When you look at his stats in Japan, it looks really good. You know, home runs are 30 plus, good amount of RBIs. You're hitting close to 300 every year. OPS is at 900 or above. He's still young, 27 years old, so he shows like he's in a good part of his career it's like in his prime he shows that he can hit the ball the thing is japan is not the same as the mlb it's not the same talent it's not the same difficulty so is he going to be able to come over and deliver the same way that he did in japan so that's kind of the big question mark when you have a player coming from a different country overseas whatever you want to say and then when i'm looking at this i don't really understand it from the rays point because you have outfielder. I know you just lost Avisail Garcia. You lost Tommy Pham, but you brought in Hunter Renfro. So I guess this kind of takes the Garcia role. But for me, it's another lefty in a lineup that's kind of lefty heavy already. You have Austin Meadows, Kevin Kiermaier. You have Lo Lau. You have G-Man Choi. You have Wendell. Those are all lefties that are part of your lineup. Why would you add another one? You got a very lefty heavy lineup. So I understand the draw to bring in, you know, a foreign player. See, if then you kind of draw from that market. Maybe that'll kind of bring some fans to the stadium to get excited because he does look like he's a great offensive threat to add to a lineup. May not be the de best defensively. He does look like he's kind of a bigger guy, so maybe he will just play DH. But you also kind of have Austin Meadows who kind of fits that same role, who may not be the best defensively, but more of a DH um, player or type player, DH, whatever. He's a DH, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So... I don't know for the Rays. I understand why they were bringing him in. You know, you you needed kind of a corner outfielder. You needed some offensive help. This definitely looks like he's gonna fit that bill. But it's another lefty. So unless you're gonna sign a couple righties to help with the lineup, or you know, just hope that this lefty heavy lineup works out in the end, it's possible. So I'm kind of intrigued to see how this plays out. Uh, two years, 12 million is not bad at all. I think the the, there's like a signing fee for him to come over is like it, i think it was like two and a half million so in the end it's like two years 15 million about so it's not a terrible deal at all if it doesn't work out it's not it's not gonna break the bank um but for the rays it's it's interesting it's a good offensive addition um i just I, i'm just kind of intrigued to see how all these lefties in the lineup are going to work so that's gonna wrap up today's video guys if you did enjoy it thumbs up down below subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoyed the content and as always in the comment section let me know what you guys think about what happened in baseball today i'll cut you oh no that's a lie two videos on screen now my most recent and also a video that youtube recommends for you and then now i'll catch you all in the next one peace